Now I think it'd be quite interesting to see what happens to this intermittent pad as it gets heated up. We'll head out to the e-fix testing zone. Whoa, whoa, Joe, whoa, whoa, we don't do this at the start of the video, this is the exciting bit. Yes, yeah, so it's exciting, so I thought I'd put it at the beginning, yeah? No, 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 you have to save that for the last part of the video. Oh, right, okay. Oh, well, in that case, then, we better start this at the beginning. In a previous video, we considered some of the challenges that have been raised for both lighting manufacturers and electricians when it comes to installing recessed lights into ceilings that have been constructed using eye joists. Now in that video, we mentioned 30, 60 and 90 minute fire rated ceilings. But what's the difference in construction between those ceilings? Where might we come across them in our work? And how do lighting manufacturers make sure that their products comply when installed into that type of ceiling? Well, we're going to discuss that in this video, so I suggest we nip over to the eFix workshop where we'll be able to answer some of those questions. So we've stepped into the eFix workshop now where we can start to talk about this subject in a little bit more detail. Now, the first thing that we want to think about is why is this a problem for the electrician? Surely this boils down to the house builder, the planner, the architect. Why has this suddenly become the problem for the electrician? Well, the answer to that is, is that when we talk about these fire ratings on ceilings, we're not just talking about how long it takes for the plasterboard to give way and the fire to spread through the hole. When we talk about a 30 minute or 60 minute or 90 minute fire rated light fitting, we're not talking about how long the light fitting will resist the spread of fire for. We're talking about that 30 minute fire rated ceiling being able to last for 30 minutes or more before it completely collapses and gives way. So when you think about it in those terms, what we're actually talking about is a system of installation, a system of construction made up of the joists, the flooring that's on top of the floor, the plasterboard that's underneath it, and any light fittings that might be installed there as well. So if you think about this subject as being about a system of construction rather than just light fittings, then it starts to make a little bit more sense why that becomes the electrician's problem. Because actually, as soon as you pierce through that plasterboard to put your light fitting in, you start to change that system of construction and become a part of that system of construction. And therefore, you've got to make sure that your work complies and doesn't damage the integrity of that system. So let's break down the 30, 60, 90 minute part of this a little bit more. So what do we mean by a 30 minute fire rated ceiling. Well, a 30 minute fire rated ceiling is one that will resist the collapse of the ceiling and the floor above for 30 minutes or more. It's got to last for at least 30 minutes under the test conditions that we saw in the previous video. Now, the thing that turns it into a 30 minute fire rated ceiling is the plasterboard that goes onto it. And in this case, generally speaking, we're talking about a single layer of plasterboard, such as we've got on our table right here. So here we've got a 15 millimeter thick uh, piece of plasterboard and that's turned this section of ceiling into a 30 minute fire rated ceiling. It is possible to use a thinner type of board as long as it is a specifically fire rated board such as Fireline from British Gypsum. Then it can go down to 12 and a half mil. Now this is a really common fire rating system that goes into properties. You find that most ceilings in domestic properties and residential properties are 30 minutes. However, one of the things that will affect whether you have a 30 minute or a 60 minute fire rated ceiling really depends on the height of the building actually. When you start looking at part B of the building regs, you start to see that as buildings get higher and higher, the fire ratings of the ceilings become longer and longer. So it goes from 30 minutes up to maybe 60 minutes. But what about a 60 minute fire rated ceiling? Where would we come across those? Well, if you've got something like a four story house or if you're working uh, on a shop or perhaps a recreation facility, uh, anything involving flats, then it's very, very likely that that will have 60 minute ceilings. And a 60 minute ceiling, generally speaking, will be double boarded. So you won't just have one layer of board like we've got here. There would be another layer of board that goes on top of this. If it's just standard plasterboard, then that will be two layers of 15 mil thick plasterboard. And if you're using a product such as the Fireline product from British Gypsum, then that might be two layers of 12 and a half mil. However, there's lots of uh, different ways of achieving that 60 minute fire rating. Now the 90 minute fire rated ceiling, we might find that in places like uh, industrial installations or perhaps where you've got a storage facility 
then the ceilings in those cases might be 90 minutes. They're not as common in uh, domestic situations. However, again, in blocks of flats, then once the building gets above a certain height, you'll start to find that there's 90 minute ceilings put in place there. And that 90 minute ceiling will consist again of two layers of plasterboard. However, in this case, it will definitely be two layers of 15 mil fireboard. There's lots of other kind of regulations and guidance on how to achieve that fire rated ceiling. This is just a brief overview. It will change depending on the spacing of the joists, the material that's on top of the floor, and lots of other factors as well. So for a bit more information on this, if you're interested, check out part B of the building regs. It's a very, very interesting read if you have even a slightly nerdy nature. So I think it's fairly clear why Gary hasn't joined me for this video. So now let's just have a little bit of a think about how our fire rated light fittings that we put into these ceiling spaces help to prevent the spread of fire into the cavity and up to the joists that are there and also how they maintain the integrity of that fire rated ceiling. So now we've given some thought to what's behind the light fitting when we put it into the ceiling. We can drill the hole. So we've got a hole in our ceiling here and we're going to put this uh, JCC light fitting into there and we're just going to attach the springs on and then shove it through the hole and hopefully that will be in there nice and tight. So we're going to push that down uh, that way, push that through the hole, squeeze the springs up and then when we push it in those springs will snap it nice and tight against the ceiling and hold it really nice and snugly there so you can see that that's holding in place really nicely. So how does that maintain the integrity of the fire rated ceiling? Well, the light fitting does it in a number of ways and most fire rated light fittings have these features. The first thing you'll notice about it is this black cylinder that's on the back here made out of steel and of course steel has quite a high melting point. So that means that if a fire breaks out in the room below and the flames try to come through this way, this is going to resist the spread of that fire for quite a long time. We've also then got these spring clips that go on the side and these are actually a really important feature of the light fitting because they hold the fitting in tension against the ceiling. They actually make sure that it's held firmly up against the ceiling, which means that uh, in the event of a fire again, this won't fall out of the ceiling and leave a hole for the fire to pass through. Careful consideration is given to the position of the spring on the fitting. If it's too low down and you try to put it into perhaps a double boarded ceiling for a 60 minute or 90 minute fire rated ceiling, then it may be that the spring clip actually just kind of sticks up in the air and doesn't actually push down on the ceiling and hold it in place properly. So that's something that lighting manufacturers take into quite deep consideration. Now by solving the problem of the fire rating by putting this black cylinder onto the back of here, We've then also got the problem that that actually contains the heat from the lamp and that's something that needs to dissipate otherwise it could cause the premature failure of the lamp which would be extremely irritating. So in the back of the fitting you can see here there is some holes punched through there and those holes are designed to allow air to pass through there, allow the heat to come out and therefore to allow the lamp to continue functioning for the correct period of time. However, again, in the event of a fire, if a fire breaks out and spreads through the light fitting, uh, it will start to pass through these holes and that could again lead to the premature collapse of the ceiling, which is obviously something we're trying to avoid. So to prevent that, the final thing that's put in place is there is an intumescent pad put between this steel can and the bracket that's holding, in this case, the uh, connection block on. And that intumescent pad is made of a material that expands an awful lot as it gets hotter. So when flames come into contact with this or when it gets very hot, it will expand enormously and that uh, expansion actually the material will clog those holes up and then stop the fire from passing through those holes and therefore maintain the integrity of the light fitting and also the fire rated ceiling of which this forms part of the system. Now I think it'd be quite interesting to see what happens to this intumescent pad as it gets heated up. We'll head out to the eFix testing zone. So just out of interest, I've removed this uh, intumescent pad from inside the light fitting. Uh, this is made of fire reactive expandable graphite. And what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna plonk this down on this bit of uh, metal I've got here uh, so that hopefully when we put the blowtorch onto here, we should see an interesting reaction. So we'll plonk that down on there. And then we'll bring the blowtorch in. And then obviously, uh, while this is blowing, you probably won't be able to hear me speaking. So we'll just see how this uh, pad reacts as we heat it up. Wow. 
So you can see there it's turned from a tiny little flat pad into this kind of massive thick pad of material that's just expanded and expanded. And what we'll do in a future video is we'll actually perform this experiment into a light fitting that's been installed into a piece of plasterboard so that we can see what that looks like when that goes up in real life. So in this video, we've seen some of those areas where we might find 30, 60 and 90 minute fire rated ceilings and we've seen how their construction differs. We've also seen demonstrated the key points of a fire rated light fitting and also what happens when a fire does indeed break out underneath a light fitting. So just a couple of further key points to consider. First of all, you have to make sure that your light fitting has been approved for the use in the type of fire rated ceiling into which you're installing it. For example, if you're installing into a 90 minute fire rated ceiling, you have to make sure that your product has been tested and approved for use in a 90 minute fire rated ceiling. And don't assume that just because it's got the biggest number on there, that means that it's acceptable for use on lower rated ceilings. So let's say you've got a 90 minute fire rated fitting going into a 30 minute fire rated ceiling. Just because it says 90 minutes on here doesn't automatically mean that it would pass the tests for a 30 minute fire rated ceiling. You have to make sure that it says the specific time on there for the type of ceiling that you're fitting it into. Also, we have to make sure that whatever light fittings we're putting in have been tested against the construction system of the ceiling that we're putting it into. So a lot of manufacturers haven't yet had all of their products tested for use in ceilings that have been constructed using eye joists. So make sure that you look on the documentation, make sure you look for the certificate that proves that the light fitting is safe for being used against the type of construction system that you're installing it into, especially where eye joists are concerned. And of course, we'll keep you updated as the situation continues to unfold.